And now we go into the sixth round of the Mid-South Television Tournament. This event will eventually decide the Mid-South Television Champion. This event is for one fall or remaining television time. In the red corner at 260 pounds from Nagasaki, Japan, Masayo Ito. And across the ring at 234 pounds from Vero Beach, Florida, Terry Taylor. Mid-South television tournament time as we move into the sixth round. Popular Terry Taylor taking on the rugged Oriental star Masao Ito. And Jim Ross, if number six is like the first five, there'll be nothing but exciting action. Well, that's exactly right. This is a main event. It can be a main event anywhere in the country right here. And they're going for the chance to win $10,000. So they're going to be turning out all the stops. Terry Taylor scooping up Masao Ito. A tremendous body slam, arm drag takedown, going into the arm bar. Terry Taylor and Masayo Ito in this single elimination tournament. The winner of this match will go against Hacksaw Butch Reed in the eighth week. And I'll tell you, there's not that many weeks left of this tournament. These men know what's on the line. The gold medal's one thing. The TV championship is, a, is another step up, the prestige. But that $10,000 check looms heavily in the eyes of all the competitors here. Masayo Ito with a very, very impressive winning streak here on Mid-South Wrestling. Has devastated some of the toughest competition in the Mid-South area. And Terry Taylor reversing the maneuver. Another arm drag takedown. And Taylor is utilizing that tremendous quickness that he does possess to combat the martial art techniques of Masayo Ito. You know, boy, I don't know exactly Ito's background as far as amateur wrestling goes. I'm assuming that it would be limited. He's more of a sumo type individual that, with extensive martial art training. So perhaps that will be Taylor's strategy to utilize some scientific wrestling maneuvers, take the man off his feet as he has done here. And Taylor has got the arm bar. He's got it really locked in. Referee Eric Johnson down there trying to converse with Ito as if he wants to give up in this predicament. I'd like to remind everyone, Superdome Saturday, coming up April the 7th. Tickets are on sale now at all Ticketmaster locations in New Orleans. It's going to be a great, great, great night of wrestling action. Some of the top stars around the world will be there. And, of course, some, some wild things. Boy, you've been here a lot longer than I. But some crazy things start happening when it comes close to Superdome time. Exactly, Jim, and I've never missed a one. There are super colossal events, extravaganzas from the first match through the final main event, so I don't have to urge the fans to spend there to make their plans, buy their tickets to be at the beautiful Superdome. Terry Taylor working on that, that arm of Masayo Ito. That's been Taylor's strategy throughout the balance of this encounter. And Taylor stopping Ito. Another powerful body slam. Taylor's going for the kill, and he got a one count. And that looked awful close. Awfully close to being a karate thrust right to the throat. Referee Eric Johnson was surveying the action. And now Ito, the martial art technique, it's going to be the martial art strategy of Ito going against the scientific principles of Terry Taylor. And now Ito has got that stomach clawed. He's got the stomach muscles. He is really, really reaching into that stomach of Taylor. Masaya Ito, we have seen him here on Mid-South Wrestling completely demolish wrestlers with that tremendous claw, not only to the throat, but now utilizing those, his strength to really lay it on Terry Taylor. And Taylor is in a very, very serious predicament here. One thing about the maneuver of Ito, it's hard to, it's hard to prepare for a match like this because there's very few grapplers that can utilize the claw holes like the Oriental Stars. Taylor fighting back, and Ito took him down by the hair. The referee didn't see it, but we did from where we're sitting. This match is one fall or television time remaining. It is the sixth round. If you've just joined us here on Mid-South Wrestling of the Mid-South Television Tournament, it's single elimination. 
the winner will be $10,000 richer when his hand is raised, and that is what Terry Taylor and Masao Ito are shooting for. Don't forget, coming up later in this hour, the Rock and Roll Express against the Midnight Express, plus Jake the Snake Roberts and many other top stars. But right now, we're going to focus all of our attention on Terry Taylor and on Masao Ito. Taylor is fighting back on Ito with those, those stiff chops with that right hand, and now Ito takes him right back down. And Ito is relentless with that claw hold. The referee asking Taylor if he wants to give it up. I've never seen Terry Taylor give up a match in my life. And I know that Masao Ito is really going for the downs here. The crowd sitting on the edge of their seats here in this capacity house at the Irish McNeil Boys Club. With quiet anticipation, Terry Taylor has found himself in a very, very serious predicament, and the momentum is all in the favor of the mysterious man from Japan, Masao Ito. Taylor coming back to his feet. Now Taylor with an all-American right hand. Taylor has tagged the Japanese. Taylor, Taylor is firing back on Ito. Terry Taylor has got the man from Japan backed into the corner. And Taylor and the referee have collided. Terry Taylor and referee Eric Johnson have collided. And Ito throws Taylor on the top. Over the top floor. rope to the floor, Jim. Ito is encouraging. Ito is encouraging Johnson to get up. Taylor, ladies and gentlemen, Terry Taylor is going underneath the ring. Terry Taylor is going underneath the ring. Terry Taylor has gone underneath the ring. The Japanese doesn't know where he is, and neither does the referee. Masao Ito is looking for Terry Taylor. Taylor's come back into the ring. Taylor's got him wrapped up. Terry Taylor for one, two, three. Masao Ito looking for Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor found Ito and gained the victory. Moves on to a higher bracket now in the television tournament. So Mid-South Wrestling is one fall or a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first in the red corner from Georgia at 237 pounds, Dale Veazey. <laughs> from Georgia and his opponent as he comes down to the music and the gyrations entering the ring from St. Louis, Missouri, King Parsons, the wrestling ice man. There's the bell called for by Carl Fergie. Here's Bill Watts. And he comes down to that music. We are family, my sister sledge. And I'm telling you, ice man can get down. And he came to Mid-South for one reason. He's fed up with Akbar. <coughs> The last couple of weeks, he has really caused Skandar Akbar's domination march a lot of problems, and I'm sure the general is going to try to figure a way to put the Iceman out of commission. But it seems like a lot of folks are rallying behind Hacksaw Butch Reed. Butch Reed refused to be a part of Skandar Akbar. Broke the solid gold Rolex President wristwatch offered to him by Buddy Landell. Looks like Iceman's got him. The greatest thing that ever happened that I think people that are athletes and enjoy the animosities, the pride, and the jealousy that, that permeates any time you're striving for the top when they saw Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Butch Reed put aside their old differences and say, we better get together to stop them. And then the Iceman faced Kamala. Kamala, the Ugandan warrior, the man that is so awesome. He paid a price, and 
East instead of running from it. He's now going to Dallas. Finish my business and I'm coming back. And here he is. Quick Japanese arm drag and arm bar and the Iceman is on top of Dale Vesey. Coming up next for the North American title, Brad Armstrong and Ted DiBiase. And of course, the Rock and Roll Express. They suffered a lot of pain and a close call, but they are still the Mid-South Tag Team Champions. However, I think they realize just how deadly serious Chavo and Hector Guerrero are about gaining those titles, and they've enlisted a new ally in Jim Cornette. Well, I'm telling you, the Iceman showed you how to use his head right there. You know one of the most vicious things in the world in a street fight is a short head button. A well placed one. It can rip your nose, it can cut your cheek. It can be devastating. An Iceman keeps it short, direct, and under control. It doesn't have to go a long way, it just has to connect right. Dale Beasley was really elevated on that one. Body slam. The Iceman has Dale Vesey a little bit confused out there right now because he's never let him breathe. And there's Ice with that flying clothesline on another victory for the Iceman. Iceman is here and everybody's happy again. favorites t-shirts of hacksaw jim duggan terry taylor the fantastic dr death bad street usa and the official uwf t-shirt each shirt can be yours for only 12 dollars a piece to order use your mastercard or visa and call 1-800-233-8741 in texas call 1-800-327-2151 or send cashier's check or money order to the address on your screen well, Mike Wilson attempted to finish his introductions, but John Tatum fully realizes the consequences in this match and that he must start quickly, but he is not doing that. The missing link on the offensive. The missing link was using his head as a battering ram. Tatum wanted to start quickly and slow the link's onslaught down. He did move out of the way. That staggered the link somewhat. There's a clothesline, solid clothesline by Hollywood John Tatum. Now remember, if you just joined us, first of all, you've missed a great hour. But this is a ballet for a day match. This match is one of the most unusual stipulations ever on television as the link headbutt Hollywood John Tatum. And this capacity crowd in the Tulsa Convention Center loves it. The link is dominating Tatum at this time. And Missy Hyatt with that purse. Referee Ron West on the other side of the ring. You can just barely see that Gucci bag into the kidneys of the missing link. Star Journey, I think, saw it. And she is certainly scoping out Missy Hyatt. Boy, this is on a collision course. And when it, they lock up, there's going to be blonde hair and clothing and skin and nails. And now Eddie Gilbert's on the top of Dark Journey, pushing him off. And Gilbert came right off on top of Tatum. Gilbert came right off the top rope. The link is there quick for the pin. Is he going to get it? Yes, he is. It has backfired. Dark Journey pushed Eddie Gilbert off the top rope. And Gilbert went down, crashing from the top on Hollywood John Tatum. We have got a pinfall. And Dark Journey will get Missy Hyatt as a valet for a day. We got to get the camera to this situation. What a feature this is going to make. I want to get the camera to this and see what that young lady has in store for her. Look at her face. She's going to be cleaning floors and a lot of other things that we're going to have the camera there. And she is really chastising Tatum. She was really depending on John to win the match. And Eddie Gilbert was there and his plan. And look at these guys. I knew this situation was coming. 
Remember the powder? They have had a lot of plans backfire. Mitchie's trying to get this situation. And I don't know. They're not going to. There's fire in the eyes, ladies and gentlemen, as Mitchie's trying to get a little order restored. We're not going anywhere. We're going to keep the camera right here. They've had several plans backfire. There's not much chemistry between Tatum and Gilbert. I can tell you that firsthand. I've seen it on and off camera. And Tatum, sucker person Eddie Gilbert. And Tatum working over hot stuff Eddie Gilbert. But here comes Sting. Hyatt and Hot Stuff International is falling apart. Now Sting with his partner Eddie Gilbert, they're beating up John Tatum. And there's Jack Victory, and he's he's taking up for Tatum. And Missy, she's seeing it all fall. Hot Stuff and Hyatt International is falling. It is crumbling before our very eyes right here. And the crowd is sitting in stunned, virtually stunned silence because they don't care if all four of these guys beat each other to death. You have just witnessed what people in pro wrestling will be talking about. You have seen it right here on the UWF, the fall of Hyatt and Hot Stuff International. There's no way this thing will be reconciliated. And this has now got to determine who she's leaving with. Is it going to be Hot Stuff or is it going to be Hollywood John Tatum? They fought over their plans of all backfires. And she's already going to be ballet for a day. What's she going to do? She wants to go with what? And Missy, by the look of things, is going with Hollywood John. Eddie Gilbert has lost the girl. Eddie Gilbert's plans with Missy Hyde apparently are going down their drain. Missy has chosen Hollywood John Tatum, but she's still going to be ballet for a day. We're still going to have the cameras there. Attention nonprofit groups and organizations. Here's a great fundraising idea. Mid-South Sports Universal Wrestling Federation will work with you in raising much needed funds. If you haven't considered using America's premier sports entertainment event, then today is the day. See the stars of the UWF in your gymnasium or athletic field. For more information, contact Scott Munns by calling 918-366-8000 or by writing to 116 West Breckenridge, Bixby, Oklahoma, 74008. Call 918-366-8000 today. Well, General, I'm here. Apparently, Michael has decided to stay at the podium. But be that as it may. All right. Well, listen and listen good. There seems to be some misconception about Devastation Incorporated growing weaker and weaker. Quite the contrary. We are growing stronger and stronger every day. As you know, I have the irrepressible, the uncomfortable one-man gang, the biggest man in wrestling, and I've got Savannah Jack, my procurator of all things, and incidentally, he can wrestle with the best of them. So whether it be the Freebirds, Dr. Dumb Death, Captain Hippie, Jim Duggan, or Cowboy Bill Watts, or Ted DeBusey, or anybody, I'm gonna give you a fair warning right now that devastation is number one in the UWF. And if you don't believe it, just come on in this square circle right now. Now I'm going to get down to my latest and one of my best discoveries, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to present one half of the Long Riders' Wild Bill 
come out there now with him four on one. Hey, they got something they want to say. They can say it to all three of our faces. Young Jeff Rakes. I don't know if he know what he's got himself into. Wild Bill Irwin, accomplished tag team partner with his brother Scott Irwin, is wasting no time. Picked him up and dropped the neck across the throat. They think I'm some kind of fool or something? Why didn't you come up there? Give me what? We're doing our job. I can't do it. You want me to do everything for you. You want me to do all the interviews, all the color commentary. I win the, uh, the rest of the announcer of the year award for you, and you're still complaining. Hey, Mama didn't raise no fool. Like I said, they got something they want to say to Bam Bam, Buddy, or me. They say it to all three of us. We'll meet them any time. You didn't like, you didn't like the odds, did you? Well, would you? Hey, I got something else to go get ready for. That's that lumberjack match, okay? And this way, with the lumberjack match, I'll know that they can't jump us from behind like they did last week. Well, you're leaving, huh? Bingo, Einstein. All right, well, Michael Hayes leaving. And to get ready for the lumberjack tag that you will see here on the UWF later in the hour, one half of the Long Riders, Wild Bill Irwin. And he is tough. You have seen him on television from coast to coast always a very very top competitor a man very proficient with a bull whip very sadistic ring attire and he has completely well he has completely annihilated jeff rates and is continuing to do so agmar has and is assembling a tremendous arsenal all centered around the giant one-man gang The controversial wrestling boots of Wild Bill Irwin placed right to the face of Jeff Rates, and that surely is all for this young man. Wild Bill Irwin. Souvenirs are available by mail. T-shirts of Hacksaw Duggan, Dr. Death, Terry Taylor, The Fantastics, Bad Street USA, and the official UWF T-shirt. Each shirt only $12. Also available by mail. Color 8x10s of Ted DiBiase, Terry Taylor, The Fantastics, Jim Duggan, The Freebirds. Each one only $5. And black and white 8x10s of Dark Journey with the Missing Link, Hacksaw Duggan, Terry Taylor, The Fantastics, Dr. Death, and Ted DiBiase. They're only $3 each by mail. Be the first in your area to own the official souvenirs of the UWF. Here's how to order. MasterCard and Visa customers call toll-free 1-800-233-8741. Texas residents call 1-800-327-2151 or send cashier check or money order to UWF Souvenirs, 1919 Caroline, Houston, Texas, 77002. All prices include postage and handling. Allow four to six weeks delivery. Please. This is a Mid-South TV title tournament match. One fall, our television time remaining. For the people of Mid-South, I want you to gaze into the corner and into the eyes of the creature from the Valley of Death, the one, the only, Humongous. And on his way to the ring, uh, in this one fall, our television time remaining uh, tournament bout from New York State, Axel Jim Duggan, the referee Tommy Gilbert. And ladies and gentlemen, I must, Axel Duggan taking a very close look at Humongous. I got a feeling they'll get to know each other much more personally than that, but I want to add that. But Hacksaw Jim Duggan's lady, Deborah, is at ringside for this match. Interesting situation here. You almost had the Beauty and the Beast with Humperdinck on the floor on the other side. Of course, being the Beast and the, <laughs> the very attractive Deborah on the outside of the ring. Well, it's good to see her again I, after what happened to her at the hands of Buzz Sawyer. A tragic incident. 
It's good to have her around at ringside. I think Duggan, Duggan, I'm sure, knows what he's doing by bringing her out to ringside with him. I think, he's, I think he has a point to prove. Both of these men squaring off there with a couple of shoulder smashes. Duggan gets the upper hand, though. Duggan caught Hubuckers with a hard clothesline, takes him down. Clothesline, of course, made illegal in NFL football, but it's still alive and well in the pro wrestling ring. Collar and elbow tie up. Humongous with a hard forearm smash. He goes for a clothesline. Duggan hangs onto the ropes to Oliver Hubbardig trying to trip him out there. Humperdinck is playing with fire there. Hacksaw Duggan is one man that you don't want to interfere with. Humongous with that big leg. Takes Duggan in again. Bear hug. Well, this is, a bad, this is a main event anywhere in the country. It is a main event without a doubt. Where else in Mid-South Wrestling, this very important television tournament matchup. Of course, the television title vacated. And it, Hacksaw Duggan went to the mask. Boy, he put that big grade-A ham on the mask to no avail. He hammered in that mask as a protective piece of gear. Catches Duggan again. Duggan, humongous has Duggan in a predicament. Here are Sir Oliver Hubbardick on the other side of the ring. Humongous has been undefeated on Mid-South Television. Certainly quite a test for Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And the fact that the TV title is on the line in this tournament makes this match a very, very, very important one. Both of these men at the top of the ranks. And Humongous again goes to the bear hug. Now he's got 275 plus pounds up in that bear hug, and he is squeezing. Hacksaw Duggan, you can see it, his back getting red around the ribs, and Humongous has really got it locked. His hands are really locked together, and Duggan is in a bad way at this point in time, with Humongous controlling the tempo, which is very unusual, as we see Deborah at ringside cheering Jim on. This is a very unusual situation to see Hacksaw Duggan in. It sure is, but the people are behind Jim Duggan 100%, as we heard him chanting, Dugan, Dugan. Tommy Gilbert wouldn't check the arm of Hacksaw Duggan. He was that close to being unconscious, but Duggan back in again, trying to attack, but still a little bit weary. That bear hug will drive the oxygen right out of your lungs, especially when applied by humongous. Well, he's 300 pounds, you know, and he's six foot six or seven, whatever he is. He's a massive individual. Sir Oliver Humperdinck wandering around to the wrong side of the ring, in my opinion. The referee can't watch everything. He's got his hands full of this tremendous confrontation, Duggan. And Duggan is being really tested by this phenomenal athlete known only as Humongous. Well, Duggan, I... This is the kind of match you really have to get psyched up for, and you really have to use a lot of strategy against a man like Humongous. And Duggan, of course, had his thoughts uh, misdirected earlier with uh, the incident we saw involving Buzz Sawyer. Dick Slater, uh, it's official, he has been fined $2,500 for his actions. Of course. All right, Duggan's back up. Duggan's up, he's firing up. Yes, sir, he's got him up. Whoa, I think that's the first time I've ever seen Humongous slam. Humongous. But the referee, right in the small of the back, right in the kidney area. Humperdinck is pulling a chair into the ring. Humperdinck is holding a chair up. This is a new tactic, but Duggan reversed it. Oh, and he hammered Humongous. Spear. They had him to spear. Lateral press. Jim Duggan is standing tall, and he is going to move right on in the Mid-South Television Tournament, ladies and gentlemen. What a tremendous, Whoa. tremendous victory. There you see him. Hacksaw Jim Duggan 
with Debra. A great victory for Hacksaw Duggan, a hard defeat for Sir Oliver Hubbardy. Humongous. Chavo Guerrero, an alumni of Burgess High School in El Paso, Texas, also a graduate of the University of Texas at El Paso, and he coached the state championship Jefferson High School wrestling team. Boy, good quick move there by Chavo Guerrero. Awesome athlete. We'll be in his hometown on July the 14th, and I know that Chavo is excited about it. We You're talking about El Paso, of course. Of course I'm talking about and El you know, Paso, Texas. You know who holds the attendance record for El Paso, who sells it out every time they go there? <laughs> I got a feeling you're going to tell us okay. as we Chavo Guerrero giving young Ken Massey a wrestling lesson. Very and good. Chavo is certainly qualified to do just that against anybody he steps in there with. Well, maybe some people like Ken Massey. Now, like us, good reversal by Massey there. See, both of them locking into that arm. What they need to do is bar it to secure it, and that way they won't be able to do those kind of reversals. I've now said many times, Chavo Guerrero, pound for pound, may be the toughest man in wrestling. Good leg trip. Now a step in over back on the leg. Good move by Guerrero. Mexican wrestlers are known for their speed, known for the size of, whoa, good spinning, good spinning leg drive. Chavo is so well versed, and obviously with his amateur background in wrestling, coaching, he's got a tremendous amateur background, but he can mix it up and then likes to do that. He likes to fight as well as anybody. He's got that, la that temper, boy, I tell you. Yeah, and he probably likes to eat tacos and burritos every day for breakfast, too. Good snap mare there. He's got Massey going. Now look, there's some strength. Picked him up and slammed him. Massey's no midget. Guerrero's definitely controlling the match, but Massey comes back. That's what I love about wrestling. You never know what's going to happen. Massey slammed him, and they're eyeing each other up right now. In El Paso on July the 14th, we'll be at a West Texas swing in early part of July. Lubbock, Texas on the 15th. Odessa, Texas on the 16th of July. Big three-day tour there in West Texas. Looking forward to that. Chavo Guerrero. Ooh! Now, what do you call that, Michael? Well, I just call that knocking him down. He used his weight. Looked like he might have gone for the Luthez body press. Didn't quite get it, but his momentum off the rope still got the guy. Now he's picked him up. He's got him up in a backbreaker. Whoa, what a move! A backbreaker over to a slam. That's got to be it. Two, three. That was, that was one fantastic move. I don't like Chavo Guerrero, but I'll give him some credit where it's due. Team action, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd coming to their feet because the Universal Wrestling Federation Tag Team Champions, Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton, coming to the ring to their favorite CZ Top. Fantastic close friends with Dusty Hill, the guy from CZ Top. That is blaring in the background. We'll be taping our next taping will be tomorrow night here in Tulsa at the Convention Center. We're off excited, Frank, about tonight in Little Rock, working with Secretary of State Bill McEwen, and we're gonna put them over the top in the erection of the first Vietnam Veterans Memorial ever built on the state capitol. That's
going to be tonight in Little Rock at Barton Coliseum, 8 o'clock. We cannot wait. I'll tell you, as a veteran, I'm proud and honored to be a part of the Universal Wrestling Federation and helping put them over the top and build his first ever Vietnam Veterans Memorial. And it's a long time coming. It's a long time overdue. Fantastic. Have really captured the hearts and minds, the fans, every age. Males, females, big kids, little kids. They all love the fantastic boy, I tell you, their battles with the sheep herders have been classic. There's been so much blood shed over this situation. And I really think the sheep herders fantastic situation. Frank has come down to this. They're not going to rest until one team is out of wrestling. It's that simple. That's the only way they can possibly end. in Dallas when they're back at the Reunion Arena. The Fantastics will be there, and I know personally they can't wait to get back in the Metroplex. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see we got more action coming your way now. We're still, remember, we've got Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts scheduled to go against Hackstall Duggan and Terry Taylor. We have not got a report from Terry Taylor. He was badly lacerated in that altercation earlier in the hour. Will Ted DiBiase replace Taylor, or will Terry Taylor be able to be Hacksaw Duggan's partner? We'll find that out and see how that match goes later in this hour just before i came on i was back in the dressing room and terry taylor was still down so i'm not sure jim what the situation is with taylor but if there's any ounce of, of, of determination everything he's got in his body if there's any way possible you know terry taylor will be there tommy rogers locking up the arm of gustavo mendoza mendoza and the libyan anti-american team Seems like there's a lot of those in pro wrestling these days rogers tags fulton then comes bobby Fulton shaking his stuff there on the second rope. And Mendoza feels the blunt of that one. Can't wait to get back in Memphis, Frankie. Some of that good barbecue on July 25th. <laughs> so the Fantastics, they'll be there as well. What are you talking about? I just spent the week, you know, down in Dallas. We were talking about that. And everybody all over the Metroplex. I'm talking about from White Settlement all the way to Mesquite. That's all they're talking about is, is the Universal Wrestling Federation coming to the Reunion Arena. The Fantastics controlling the tempo of this match. And I've said this many times, and I apologize if I'm being redundant. But if they can control the tempo of any match they're in, they can win it. I don't care what anybody says, like Michael Hayes or Eddie Gilbert or anybody else. I think the Fantastics are just reaching their, their prime, their peak. And I really think we have yet to see their best. I think they're getting better every single day. I agree. You know, they're, they're two, the, the, the two best, well, uh, not conditioned, but well-coordinated athletes I think I've ever seen. And they've yet to reach their prime. They're yet to reach their peak. Ooh, big knee lift. Mendoza setting pulling up for the for the elevation and rogers comes in with a drop kick and that was perfect all our wrestling too that big knee lift huh that's exactly right high elevation mendoza wants to tag the libyan but rogers has upset that plan because the libyan's on the floor and now he's back in the ring we got all four of them in the ring they throw them together one from cuba one from libya double drop kick the big man from Libya's outside. And Gustavo Mendoza with a double drop kick. Mendoza's on Dream Street. Fantastical teamwork. Frank, they're on fire. I'll tell you what, you can't beat this team. They're unbelievable when it comes to teamwork. There it is, one, two, three, the UWF champions victorious again. The Fantastics and the Sheep Herders now collide, and when they do something, Something's got to give. Something's got to give in that next meeting, and we'll be back. Yeah. 